Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us for our uh, first real full warrant committee meeting of this fiscal year. Uh, we have a number of things to talk about tonight. Uh, our first order of business, uh, or I should say the major order of business, is the <clears throat> discussion that we have of the warrant, which was published and approved by the select board on uh, July 28th. Uh, there are uh, six full articles, two possible that will be reviewed uh, for the October 25th special town meeting. Uh, but at, uh, Katie Conlon, who's chair of the select board, will be joining us uh, a little bit later to go through the warrants, uh, the articles themselves. And we should be able to uh, accomplish all this stuff. Uh, we will have a couple of presentations as we go forward uh, from members of the planning board and a couple of other uh, people who are sponsoring these articles so that we can have um, uh, a fair uh, discussion and presentation of all sides of the issues uh, we're, being to, uh, we're being asked to review. So with that in mind, um, as we have a quorum, uh, those are the, that's the extent of my remarks uh, for this meeting. Uh, <clears throat> our next order of business to approve the meeting minutes of March 22nd, 2021 and March 24th. 2021, which you should all have received electronically. Um, uh, if there are no changes, amendments, or additions, the chair will entertain a motion to uh, approve uh, these minutes and accept them as presented. Uh, George, um, I'm just going to do a quick roll call here because yes. uh, we're over Zoom. So oh, we have to yes. announce. Yes. So we have John, Stephen, George, Kathy, Kristen, Lorraine, Aaron, JJ, Dave, Christine, Emily. Excellent. That's great. And we know that uh, there are at least at least um, uh, Scott <clears throat> will not join us. I did not hear from Susanna. Uh, did we hear anything? Or from Ohenny? No. Okay. Well, if they join us, terrific. If they don't, uh, they'll have to catch up. Uh, I know it's August. People are away. I understand that. Okay. So we all received the uh, warrant articles uh, or a list of the warrant articles. Did everybody? Everybody has them, right? You want to do the minutes, George? Uh, well, I'm sorry. That's right. I'm still waiting for a motion for the minutes. So I'll make a motion to accept the minutes for the October, I mean, March 20th and 24th. Okay, terrific. Do we have a second on those? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Lynn, can you take the roll? Sure. John? It's a yay and I vote. Okay, I'll come back to John. Stephen? Yeah. Yes. George? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Kristen? Yes. Lorraine? Yes. Erin? Yes. JJ? Yes. Dave? Yes. Oh. Okay, Christine? Yes. Emily? Yes. Oh, Henny, would you like to vote or would you like to abstain? We're talking about the meeting. I'll abstain and since I missed whatever it is. Okay, and I'm gonna go back to John. John, are you able to unmute? Yes. There you go. Okay. I vote yes. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. So we are approved. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so the next article of business is looking at the warrant articles themselves. Um, and uh, just so everybody's clear, we also received a timeline. The timeline for the warrant articles uh, has us presenting our findings and our uh, the actual warrant report um, <clears throat> by the uh, final changes have to be on the 16th of September. So we are obliged to review these articles, discuss them, and to come up with recommendations for town meeting uh, and have them to the printer by the 16th of September, which gives us about six weeks. And as there are right now, there are six articles that are 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 clearly deliberated and the two on the fire station project, which are at the very end of our article listing. I'm not quite sure how those are gonna be handled. Maybe Katie can answer those when she joins us. Uh, but at this point, uh, if we look at the articles, the first is the acquisition of 41 Wharf Street, which was presented by the select board. Uh, the second is a budget review of the lead town council um, Murphy, Hesse, Tui, and Lahane's bills. Um, uh, actually, uh, does everybody have, let me ask you this question, does everybody have these so we don't have to repeat ourselves here? 
uh, in going through these because um, I don't I don't really want to be uh, spending our time uh, if everybody does not have these. Mr. Mr. Chair, we did receive them, but I have a different different num I have a different article for number two. My article two is earth materials. Is that That's incorrect? What I have. Yeah, I was looking at the listing that the town uh, that the select board sent. As you look at the articles, the actual articles themselves, Article One is about Forty One War Street. Article Two is the uh, bylaw for the earth materials moving. So I think that there might be some discrepancy in the listing and the actual articles themselves as they're presented. Article Three is an amendment uh, for the stormwater bylaw. Out of Four, Article Four is uh, funding for the cable access. That we've been hearing about already that Mike Zulis talked about the last meeting. Article five uh, is um, a review of the fit of the law, uh, the legal expense budget uh, for the town. And article six that we have um, <clears throat> deals with the appropriation uh, for transfers of funds. Um, uh, generally speaking, I uh, think Katie Conlon has joined us. Katie, are you with us? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'm here. Oh, terrific. Nice to see you. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Thank you for having me this evening. Oh, no, thank you for making the time to come and talk to us. We appreciate it. Um, we have a, a large number of our members. Several people are, are away, but we have a large number, number of membership here. And uh, we're very much looking forward to uh, your comments about the articles themselves um, as they've been presented. Um, am I right to see that we have six with the two fire station, either not yet included or how is that being handled? Yes, Mr. Chair. So we have six presently and they've been numbered one through six. And we also have two potential articles from the fire station building committee, which one of our members, Richard Wells mentioned at our, he is our liaison to the fire station building committee. At our meeting last week, he mentioned that they were expecting to submit two articles. Um, I think th those issues are still being discussed with town council and with the town accountant. So. Uh, one of them was described as a capital stabilization appropriation article, and the other one was a prior year appropriation article. And I don't have any more details than that at this time, but we are scheduling, we're in the process of trying to schedule a meeting for our board for Friday morning, but we may have some more information um, soon. We have a regular meeting tomorrow night, but the fire station articles are not on the agenda. So we're going to try to uh, set something up to get those pinned down quickly and get them over to you if there will be articles. Terrific. Okay. Um, I understand that uh, Article 1 is not going to be uh, discussed tonight, um, but if you can uh, just talk about the other articles that uh, you can talk about, we're thrilled to hear it. Uh, sure, Mr. Chair, and, and um, thank you for, again for having me tonight. I want to say um, hello to all of the new members, especially my friend Lorraine D., who, whom I served with many years ago on the Warrant Committee. So, so uh, it's great to see Lorraine back came, on the Warrant Committee. Back for more. I know, like Tom Hurley did one year too. <laughs> so, so Article One is something that we've been discussing in executive sessions. So it's not ripe yet for discussion, but we're hoping to be back to you soon on that article. So it's yep. it's not something we're in a position to talk about this evening. Forty one, refresh memory. Forty one Wharf Street is the old yacht club. Uh, it's it, it's adjacent. Yes, it's adjacent land to the yacht club. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. Okay, good. All right. Well, we'll whenever you can bring that up, we'll be. Uh, Okay, and Article 2 is a planning board article, so that's something that they've been working on, and they'll have to speak to, the, to this article. Um, article 3 is, a, as I understand it, it's a technical correction to the stormwater bylaw, and we thought it would be best to have Chase Berkeley come into one of your meetings to discuss it. We have not had a chance to meet with him other than to know that it's something that DPW wanted to submit, and it's a technical correction to the bylaw. So um, he can explain the reasoning for that article. Um, I, okay. I don't think we had your your meeting schedule, so once we get that, um, we can we can get some of the um, the people who may need to come in specifically on some of these articles to come in and talk with the Warren Committee about them, provide any information. That's great. Well, we can do that. Yes. Okay. Ar article four is the. Um, the Municipal Broadband Committee asked our board to submit this article. There's a lot of funding available under the American Rescue Plan, the federal money relating to the coronavirus pandemic, and it can be used for certain items, including infrastructure and broadband. And 
there's been some discussion at the municipal broadband committee about using ARPA funds versus using some of the cable funds, or maybe a combination of both to move forward with their plans for, muni for a municipal INET and uh, broadband in the town of Milton. They would like to speak with you about this article. They gave us a presentation last week that was very good and there's, they have a PowerPoint. They would like to come in and talk with you about this article. And I think it makes sense for them to cover the details, um, but it's essentially, they're going to be looking for an appropriation from the cable fund to, I believe, to supplement any federal funds uh, to move on to the next stage of this process. Katie, who is, is this the one, uh, the, the group that Mike Zulis is involved with? <laughs> yes, and I think Rob Lynch is the chair of that committee. He's the All one right. who those last week. Um, okay. so, so they would like to address that article and, and provide, probably give you the same PowerPoint presentation that they gave to us. Okay. Articles five and six, I can speak to in a little more detail. Um, article five, through this article, the select board is looking to make really just a transfer between two line items in the law budget. We're not looking to impact the bottom line in any way. What we're looking to do is increase the retainer line by $10,000 from 65 to 75,000 and decrease the professional and special services line by $10,000 from 280,000 to 270,000. The reason for this, I, I think a lot of the returning members are familiar with the law budget in which we have one component, which is a flat fee that it's called the retainer, but it's a flat fee. And it's used for any kind of town council services, general advice to boards and committees, advice relating to public records, open meeting law, if the planning board has a zoning question, they call town council. It's all the time entries that town council um, records are all billed to the town under the retainer and we just get a flat fee billed to us each month for those services. We just divide the $65,000 by 12 months and pay it on a monthly basis. The professional and special services line covers any sort of special project. So any litigation cases, real estate transactions, other special projects that are really outside the realm of general advice to boards and committees and town employees on a daily basis. And that's, most of it would be litigation, but that's what the professional and special services line covers. What we can find, yes, George. I have a question on that one. The, 65, the increase from 65,000 to 75,000 would be an increase to the retainer that we pay to Murphy Hesse. Is that accurate? Yes. yes, that's correct. Okay. And so the other professional and special services, are they paid also to Murphy Hesse or is, are they paid to special counsel that might be retained for a specific purpose, et cetera? Primarily to Murphy Hesse, but we do have special counsel handling certain issues for the town. We have special counsel on the 40B projects um, on the fire station matter acquisition because um, we needed to have special counsel. Town council had a conflict of interest on that project. And, gen and, and generally speaking, are these, um, uh, if they are, if it is not Murphy Hesse, if it is another council, I'm assuming that they provide um, uh, estimates for what litigation costs would be, and then the invoices per hour, assuming that they bill per hour or per six minute increment, however it's done for those services. Yes, they, we, there's usually a reduced municipal rate for that law firms provide to, to towns. Yeah. So th they are reduced rates um, and litigation to the extent that there can be an estimate, yes, but sometimes it's difficult you know, oh, to sure. estimate litigation mm -hmm. costs. Yeah. The reason okay. we're seeking to increase the retainer is because in the last year or so, we've had just an incredible increase in the amount of public records that are being requested of the town. And a lot of these, some of them are very simple requests. Somebody needs a birth certificate or a copy of a motor vehicle accident report. Those are handled pretty quickly. Some of the public records requests need to be reviewed by town council for purposes of redaction, because there may be privacy issues. Someone who submitted an email, you know, there may be private information about that resident in an email. There could be health information. There could be a telephone number or an email address. That's really not a public document. So often these, and sometimes there's attorney client privilege. There's all kinds of reasons that it, we may need town council to look at public records requests and redact them or respond to certain requests. We've had quite a few of them in the last year. And as a result, largely of that, but also just the number of times that boards and committees are consulting with town council or um, different matters that are being billed under the retainer. For instance, 41 Wharf Street has been billed under the retainer. And I think probably that should be billed, transferred over to the professional and special services line because it's been an extensive project. So 
we're finding that town council is really taking a loss on um it's probably always been a loss leader for town council they're always getting underpaid for the town council services they provide because of the flat fee and it's not a significant flat fee but we're finding in the past year really town council is spending an awful lot more time on matters in every given month and being paid under the retainer at a very low discounted amount of the time that his office is actually spending so it's it's really a matter of trying to get this back up a little bit to where it should be a couple of years ago, town council did request an increase in the retainer from 65 to 75,000. That increase made it into an early version of the budget. But as we were in the spring of 2019, as we were coming into the final balancing the budget and trying to come up with a, a way to make all departments happy, we, um, among some other reductions, we, we asked town council to hold that steady for us for the year to keep it at 65. We saved $10,000 there that I think we put into another budget. And I think in hindsight, and I had some involvement in that, and I think in hindsight, we would have been better off reducing the special services line, which varies from year to year, depending on the, the litigation cases or anything else that's going on project-wise, such as a real estate transaction. So it's really, it's been a several years since the retainer has been increased and we think it's time to do it. I, I wish we had thought to do it in the spring, but um, we're seeing just so many records requests that it, it's something I've been talking with town council about for a little while now that we really should look to address this. So that's what we're trying to do here is just transfer money within lines. Last year, the professional services line came in under budget. We did not have to tap the reserve fund for any legal bills and, um, so we think 270,000, we're, we're comfortable with that for professional services and 75 for the retainer would bring a little bit more equity to all of the work that town council is doing. So as, as uh, just to make sure everybody understands, there is no net change to the bottom line. It's just a question of reallocation among accounts. So one question that I would ask, knowing how much this group particularly has taken a um, I don't want to say taken advantage of Kevin Freitag, our town council, but certainly benefited from his expertise, I will say. Um, is, is, is the increase you're projecting sufficient for how, uh, I mean, I've, I've had conversations with him because, you know, he gets the, the retainer is, you know, is flat for a month, whether he spends one hour or 500 hours. And I know in some cases, particularly because we had such an incredibly detailed uh, town special town meeting last year and an annual town meeting uh, just that week alone I, I can't calculate how many hours he put in uh, between the different committees and being available for the, the many nights that we were in session so so the question that I have is <clears throat> is that a sufficient uh, increase that will cover uh, the time that he actually puts in it, it, it won't fully cover it you know the, he's still going to be taking a loss in some months probably most months um, but it will at least bring it a little bit more in line with where he had requested a couple of years ago. And as we go into the FY23 budget process, hard to believe to FY23, um, we can look at it again going forward for the following year. But our, our board felt it would be was it would be right this year to increase it in the current fiscal year to 75 from 65 to at okay. least make, make some improvement. Uh, are there any questions for our distinguished select board chair? Kathy, please. So, um, well, I'm just some, kind of surprised that, that we had such a um, spirited discussion on a lot of the budget items. I'm surprised that this didn't come up during the, the process. So I know you addressed it, maybe you wish it had had, but I guess I, I do too. Um, but my question is, um, in last week's Milton Times article written by, uh, there was an article written by a town meeting member and she was questioning why she could not get documents. And I guess she did some research and she determined that there was no contract with um, H M H T L, which is our Ruby legal firm. To yeah. And yeah. I, you know, I, I, it caught my attention because at one point it said she was um, encouraged to talk with Milton, the Milton uh, warrant committee or, and had had no success. So I just didn't know is it has, have we been reached, has someone reached out to anybody on the Milton? Kathy, I, Kathy I can answer that. Um, she has had contact with the Warren Committee through its chair. I've had extensive email conversations with this particular town meeting member. Um, I still have not determined exactly what we as the Warren Committee can do because we do not exercise an audit function. And what she is looking for is an audit of what has been spent as far as I can tell. Uh, I know that 
She has been in touch with the select board as well and has made multiple requests uh, from Murphy Hesse, approached the Secretary of State and done all the things that uh, one needs to do to get information requests, which is perfectly in keeping with her role and what she perceives is her responsibility. Uh, I'm just not sure exactly what we as the Warren Committee uh, are supposed to do about this, simply because it's not our function to exercise oversight either of contracts or of <clears throat> bills. I mean, we approve a budget, the budget is paid. Um, if there's an irregularity that's brought to someone's attention, it's by the auditor of the town's, of town's finances, not properly speaking, the Warren Committee. And very honestly, given the load that we have, uh, the work that we undertake, um, I'm still not 100% sure uh, precisely what we can do about it that will make good use of her time, this town meeting member's time, or of our time. So it is inaccurate that she has had no success reaching the Warren Committee. She has reached the Warren Committee. This member of the Warren Committee, the chair, has not yet determined precisely what we can do about her issues. I think it's more a function of the town manager and the select board, and I, I understand she has also been in touch uh, with other members of the town uh, uh, administration. So um, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's still a reasonably open question. Um, and I, uh, I, I'll leave it, Katie, if you want to add anything, uh, you, I think, have a, a, a broad sense of, uh, of this issue anyway. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I can report that I have um, answered, answered multiple emails from the town meeting member who published the letter to the editor in Milton Times. That letter is on our agenda for tomorrow evening. I'm uh, hopeful that our board will respond to it. I think we need to respond to it. Um, there's a lot of inaccurate information in it. And um, town council is appointed by the select board. This particular firm was appointed in the late 1980s, has been you know, engaged and retained by multiple select boards over the years and over the decades. And all of the invoices that have been requested by the town meeting member have been provided. Is she accurate in saying that we don't have contracts though with some of, with the legal counsel? We, so the, the way the process works is town council is appointed by the board. Town council submits a fee request every year. It goes through the normal budget process. Um, and the, the determination at town meeting of what the budget is, is what, is what, um, Sets the, sets the amount that can be charged and what the cap is on the retainer. For professional services, if we wind up, and some years in the past, we have gone over it. We've, because of the, the, it either was too low or there was a lot of litigation in one year and we've had to go to the reserve fund for legal bills to pay. So, um, you know, those are, the, the town has, needs to have legal counsel, needs to pay its legal bills. And the budget is always an estimate. What we, what we do in putting the budget together is look at the prior three to five years Kind of come up with an average, take stock of what litigation is pending, what things we're projecting we're going to need town council for, a special council for, and that's how the professional services line gets built. But it's it's a rough estimate at the beginning of every year. So there's a, it's an appointment. It, there's but there are fee letters that are submitted from Murphy Hesse to the town each year. Okay, thank you. And just another note about that: um, we often get requests from townspeople, from town meeting members to speak to the town, uh, to the Warren Committee. I am extraordinarily protective of your time. Uh, I understand what our mission is. I also understand that in years past, um, other chairs have been welcoming or, or, or tolerant or whatever adjective you want to use of uh, people coming to speak on whatever subject and meetings went on for hours. I can't, I can't sit for a long meeting. I lose, I lose consciousness after a certain period of time. Uh, and again, I am very protective of your time and extraordinarily observant of our role so that we do not overstep our purview. We have enough to do. And again, I will be extraordinarily considerate of concerns that come forward, but they have to be related to either articles that are put before us or issues where we can have an influence that will be of some value to the town meeting. That is our role, not to be um, a sounding board for uh, people with concerns or dissatisfied citizens of one sort or another. If they choose to put an article, a citizen's petition forward, that's a different story. But just because they have an issue doesn't necessarily mean that they have the right to come to us particularly uh, and hear their grievances. That's not our role. Okay, so uh, with that, having, having said that, um, 
Katie, is there anything else that we uh, need to be aware of from your perspective at this well, point? Were... Any, any issues? Mr. Chair, there were other hands, Mr. Chair. I didn't know if there were questions for this article or not. Yes, go ahead. Who has, uh, does anyone else? Kathy asked a question. Are there others? That are, oh, oh, Henny, you have your hand up, and Aaron, I didn't see who was first, but um, I'll toss a coin. But, oh, Henny, if you want to go ahead, please. Thank you, Aaron. Sure. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Um, so my So my question is in regard to whether... Um, I know I've seen a couple of contracts for other city sort of attorneys and that kind of retainer fees. There's usually a portion where there's a, um, uh, I don't know what you call it, like amount over retainer, right? And done at an hourly rate. So you set a retainer and then there's an hourly rate that enables us to calculate what the actual expenditure would be, right? And then paid out on a, uh, on a, on a some basis of that. And my question ties into the question of benchmarking Right. If if we're if we're continuing to underpay, um, is there any effort to actually figure out one what we should be paying is generally benchmarking or getting the actual real um, numbers so that we're not in a position where, uh, we're, we're, as as the chair said, we're, we're robbing our attorneys and we, we continue to have the good relationship that we have. Um. So, Mister, sorry, I think I can answer that question by saying, you know, um. The retainer is intended to be a flat fee for town council services. So uh, town council goes in expecting that the, there are going to be some months, and, and I, in our case, it's been, I think, most months, if not all months, where the services they're providing are in excess of what the payment under the retainer would be. Um, we, we, can, we can look at that and see whether there are items that could be moved to professional services, which either way, I mean, the town council is billing us at a much reduced rate than what, you know, what some of the downtown firms would charge to other business clients or other clients that are not municipalities. So I think what we can do, you know, town council asked for the increase to 10,000 two years ago, did not pursue it, knew that we were having some budget difficulties, especially with the pandemic last year. I think we can revisit it with town council for FY23 and see what we think based on the current year's bills and where the retainer winds up and how much of a loss they're taking. I think we can revisit it at that point and see whether we should increase it further for FY23. But I think town council would be, um, you know, we'd be grateful if we were to increase it by the 10,000 this year, which we did into a couple of years ago. I, I hope that answers your question. I oh, thank you. It's a budget control measure is what you're basically saying. We've, we've, we've fixed the cap and there's no overage uh, by design. Yes, and a lot of the services are being billed under the professional services line. So that, you know, that, that they are reduced hours, but there's still amount, a fair amount of time and that's being charged to that line. So just to be certain that everybody understands, the billing for uh, questions that we bring to Kevin from Kevin Freytag, the town council from time to time, that the planning board might have, that, that the select board would have, is covered under the retainer. That's accurate. Okay. Is it, Katie? Yes, and that's it, correct. Yeah, and anything over that, if there were a real estate question or a question of conveyance or a, a litigation issue for, for employee uh, disability or uh, liability for the town on some level or other would be covered under the professional services, which is a separate line. Item. Well, but Mr. Chair, even, even some a general question about a conveyance or a general question uh, about an employee issue would still be covered under the retainer if it's just a, if it's just a general question, general advice. But if there's a if there's a you know a case before the MCAD relating to an employee, that would be built separately outside of the okay. retainer. If okay. there's a purchase of land, okay. that would be outside yeah. the retainer. Okay. And the schools are also outside the retainer, just to be clear, right? The schools, the schools have their own council, but yes. they on occasion they use town council for general questions, but for the most part, most of what they most of their legal advice comes from separate council that they retain. Okay. They have a separate line item in their budget, and we'll review that when I uh, thought so. Yeah. Yes, they do. And, and occasionally, I know there's an overlap with Murphy Hesse with them, but they do engage specific councils for, you know, issues that come okay. up time to time in the school department. So, Erin, uh, did you have a, oh, Henny, are you finished? I'm finished. Thank you. Perfect. Erin, do you have a question? Yeah, just real quick, uh, Ms. Conlon, thank you so much for being here tonight. I heard you say that we get a reduced rate because we're a municipality. Can you tell me um, how much we pay for an hourly rate with them? Oh, I think it's... I don't want to give you the wrong information. Let me see if I have any of it here. I should have, I, if not, I can get you that. Um, Absolutely, no problem. I was just curious. Thank you. 
Okay, I'll I'll get that and we'll put it in an email and get it back to, to the chair. Great. Thank you. Uh, other questions? Uh, I don't see any other hands up. Okay, terrific. Um, okay, uh, Katie, is there anything else then since we've covered that, is there anything else that you want to bring to our attention? Just with respect to Article 6, which is the same language that we submitted in prior fall town meetings the, la the last couple of years for budget revisions. Um, All right. The, the, the reason that this was submitted is state aid, when, when the governor signed the state budget, state aid for Milton came in roughly $45,000, $47,000 below what we had budgeted. Um, it was lower than what the Senate had put forward in the spring. And, the town meeting budget in May was based off of the Senate budget, but when it, when the state budget went into a conference committee with the House and Senate, ultimately it was reduced. So there's a few different ways to handle that. One would be to reduce budgets by the amount that state aid is reduced, but we, we also recognize that our meeting that state aid is one component of the budget. There could be local receipts. We may see an increase in some of the local receipt lines. It could be that as we get close to the end of the fiscal year, we can do a transfer between departments or between lines within a department. So there may be, or we could tap the reserve fund. So there may be some different ways of tackling this. Um, the town accountant wanted to talk with the school assistant superintendent of business. And there's also a lot of federal funds that have been flowing into the town coffers through the, the ARPA funds and the ESSER funds on the school side. And they wanted to discuss whether they thought th this reduction of 47,000 could be absorbed within the budgets somehow or through the reserve fund or um, through receipts protect perhaps coming in higher on, on a different line item that will be projected. So it's possible that we'll withdraw our article six. We wanted to put it in just to be sure that it was in the warrant for consideration, but we, we'd like to get some more information from this back from the school department and our finance committee. I believe they met this morning and they're meeting again in a week and they're they going to be meeting soon with the school finance subcommittee. So that one, I think was put in reluctantly. We're hoping there's a better way other than reducing budgets at town meeting to address this shortfall. Katie, uh, while we're on the subject of um, monies coming in from external sources, have we been updated on when federal funds will come in for the pandemic that we've been thinking, we've been hearing about uh, and actually um, talked about a little bit in budget time for this year, uh, last spring. The first 50% of the American Recovery Plan Act funds have come in. So we've received those, uh, I think it's 1.3 or 1.4 million. Those have been received. There's certain uses that can they can be used for. Um, yes. Again, infrastructure, broadband, there's some other categories. Our finance committee is looking to make a recommendation. They were inclined to want to put at least the initial portion to of this, the town's direct money into an infrastructure project. Um, there's also county money that has not been received by the town, but has been received by the county. And the county commissioners are still looking at how they're going to distribute that. But we're expecting that at least some of it is going to be flowing directly into the town. So is, is that money restricted as to use also? Yes. Yes. Because I know that there was discussion of saying some of that money go to the school, uh, the public schools. Is that still possible? We, we have talked with them about that right now. The, the discussions between the town and school side are focused on the CARES Act. There's still some CARES Act money that's expiring at the end of December that some of the school expenses have been applied uh, to those funds. The schools have received close to a million dollars from the federal government for their own purposes. So um, there will continue to be discussions uh, between the town finance, the ARS finance committee and the school finance subcommittee as we go forward into the summer and the town accountant and the assistant superintendent are working together to be sure that we're taking full advantage of all federal funding. But uh, I think what's going to be coming to our board is a recommendation from our finance committee related to a DPW project. And um, at least that's what they were talking about when we, when we last met, that that was something that they were gonna be looking at. Okay, great. Uh, are there any other questions for the select board chair? Mr. Chair. Oh, Henning. Can I, can we just, I'm, I'm just slow, maybe it's just been summer off. Uh, so for the sake of the cobwebs out of my brain, forgive me. I, I'm trying to understand why we need to, you're talking about, uh, uh, or, or thinking about a sort of flat line reduction across the budget. If all these monies came, the school's got a million dollars. I'm just trying to reconcile all of it. And we're thinking about a project. I know there's some allocation restrictions, but uh, why do we need to, can you just 
Miss Collin, could you help me, please? And I very much appreciate the extra character. Just lay out. You said the budget before was was capped based on the Senate budget. Once it was reduced, um, the actual budget came in less. So I'm just trying to understand how all that flows, such that we still need to make a reduction at town meeting when additional monies have sort of flowed in the side door here. And, and we may not. We wanted to submit the article in, in case we do, but. We, we also wanted to be sure we fully explored with the schools what, what we think the alternatives might be to reducing any budgets, whether it's that budget or any other budget. Um, the town meeting in May in the Warren Committee process and our process all based the, the revenue projections were based on this, the Senate version of the budget at the time, which had put forward the highest amount of state aid built on the governor's budget and the house budget. But when, they, when the budget went into conference committee between the house and Senate, the final budget that came to the governor for signature and that he signed had about forty-seven thousand dollars less in state aid for Milton. So one of our line, one of our revenue lines has gone down. It's possible we'll make that up with other trash or trash fee collections, fee other fee collections, tax receipts. There's any number of other line items in under the category of revenue where we might be able to make up the difference. So it may be a wash. We won't know that until we get much further into the year. Or it may be that we can offset some, the use of some of these federal funds um, to su supplement a budget with some federal funds where the offset and reduce state aid might really not matter to the point where we have to actually go in and reduce a budget. So there's a, there's a, there's a lot of different pieces that we're, we need to look at together with the school department. And we wanted to submit the article, but we are also hoping that we can uh, withdraw the article if there's a better way to handle the reduced state aid. We should, there are two things I think that we have to remember that last year was kind of an extraordinary time because we had a revenue drop in, in, in crazy line items, things like, you know, speeding tickets, parking tickets, building permits, things like that, which were affected in the normal course of business by the pandemic because volumes came down. People just couldn't do things in their homes that required building permits and, you know, real estate conveyances might have been slower, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the revenue uh, line was affected adversely. Conversely, we have, um, you know, a whole list of things that we've been looking at uh, across the boards that have been, you know, requested for years and years, some of which we were able to do and some of which we weren't. So to these offsets that are coming in from outside sources uh, as one-time funds are terrific for the immediate need, but I think we have to be rather circumspect and look down the, 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 the fairway a little bit to make sure that if we are going to commit to longer-term projects, the funding is there. Uh, because, I mean, I, I'm not going to say we're going to have another pandemic, but things happen. Uh, and, you know, we, we have been, I think, very lucky in town because there's been a great deal of stewardship on a number of parts, whether it's the select board or the town administrator or the different departments, uh, to really, you know, tighten the belt. I mean, I, I, I joked with a couple of the town <laughs> department heads, uh, you know, this is a loaves and fishes budget. You know, we've, they've created this, this incredible... Uh, service continuation uh, and multiplied the loaves and fishes when we really didn't have much before to work with. So I, I think that you know Milton has um, uh, has done extremely well uh, to 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 make do. And the offset that we will get from these aid sources, I think, is just going to be a benefit as we look forward. And I think we as as a, as, a, as a group have to make sure that we keep our perspective as to what it is that we're going to be funding and whether it's an ongoing need uh, and we recognize that there is a funding that has to be made, but the funding will be there going forward. I've talked enough. Kathy, you have a question. Just a quick question. So um, I understand that um, we've got additional funding that may come in, but at what point would we have to balance the budget where we know we have a 47,000 shortfall right now? Well, the budget, so the, the FY22 budget will have to be finalized in, before the tax recap is done in usually in November. Right. So we'll have some definitive information as to whether Article 6 is going forward and whether there'll be anyone seeking to reduce any budgets, probably in a matter of a couple of weeks. But um, we are hoping that we can just withdraw that article and supplement budgets elsewhere, elsewhere as we go okay. through the year. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, excellent. Katie, we really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll make arrangements um, uh, for the planning board to come in over the next couple of weeks so we can get their information and see if Chase can come and talk to us. And 
as soon as you're ready to talk about Article 1, uh, if you or uh, another member of the uh, uh, select board can come and, and give us your perspective on that, that will be helpful. And uh, if we get Mike, uh, Mike Zulis or whomever he thinks is the, the right person, Mr. Lynch possibly, to come in to talk about broadband, then I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you. Good night. Talk to you soon. Good night. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Um, thank you all. Uh, I think that we have uh, a pretty good framework for how we need to proceed. Uh, I will I suggest that we should get our meetings in order this week and uh, coming week, which will be the 9th of August and the 16th of August, so that we will have plenty of time to draft our opinions, to have people come in and talk about these things over the next couple of weeks. Assume that there will be six articles. Um, I don't know whether the fire station articles will be ready, but assuming that there are going to be six articles, I think that's manageable for us to do between now and uh, mid-September. So my suggestion is that we have a Zoom meeting this week, on the ninth, a week from today, on the 9th of August, and then another on the 16th, and plan to have the zoning board representative, I'm sorry, the planning board representative come in, uh, the cable people, um, uh, and Chase Berkeley. If we can get them in the next meeting, that would be great. Uh, but to try to get as much information uh, in hand so that the questions that we put forward can be answered and we can draft our opinions uh, and recommendations to the our comments and our recommendations to the town meeting. Does that sound like a, a, a good way to proceed, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Okay, so that having been said, Lynn, can you um, go ahead and approach uh, uh, Chase at the DPW and um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember who the new chair of the planning board is, because I think April is off uh, yes. as of the town meeting. Um, and, uh, and, and Mike Zulis or whoever he thinks is the right person for the cable group. Um, and I think, and the, the stormwater, <coughs> excuse me. Um, well, maybe Chase can talk to that one as well. Uh, that's right. So that will be a cable. Let me see, did I miss anything? You can talk about that in the planning board. And then when they come back with article one, we'll be in good shape. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, if there is no other business, uh, uh, let me open it up. Does anybody have any questions or issues or concerns that we need to address right now? <clears throat> if not, uh, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn uh, until next Monday at seven on Zoom. Motion to adjourn until next Monday. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Thank you. Lynn, do you want to take the uh, take the head count, take the poll? John. Stephen. Yes. George. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Kristen. Yes. Lorraine. Yes. Aaron. Yes. JJ. Yes. Dave? Yes. Christine? Yes. Emily? Yes. Oheny? Yes. And John? Yes. That's it. Terrific. Uh, meeting adjourned. Thank you all very much. See you next week. Thank you. Have a good Bye. night, everybody. Thank you.